everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing kapai. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in April. Yes, I know this video is delayed. I really struggle with these videos. Who knows or remembers what they've read. It's just a bit of a struggle for me to have the energy or like the oomph to want to talk about books that I finished that long ago. Especially if it was a book I didn't really enjoy. I'm going to try and make this, keep this really short um, and not label on too much. I read seven books in April pretty good and we started off with a banger first up I read Zadie Smith's White Teeth and if you don't already follow me on Instagram you won't know that I'm obsessed with this book my whole Instagram account has become a Zadie Smith stan account and any mention of her I'm like my ears perk up I'm like what Zadie you read it I really really love this book it's a, a genre of fiction that I had not heard of before, maximalist fiction. I think along the same veins as potentially Jonathan Franzen, Salman Rushdie, David Foster Wallace. If the name would suggest anything, it does have a lot going on in this book, but it all makes sense. It all comes together in the end there's never any point during this book of reading it that I felt worried about everything that was going on and whether or not I should be paying attention because it always kind of comes back to the heart of it yeah her ability to just kind of keep the scope of the story clear in her mind and take us on this journey through this story was really brilliant as a story of Two families, at the head of each family is Archibald Jones and Samad Iqbal, they were comrades in war. Uh, Archibald is a white British man, Samad is a Bengali man, and after the war they both go back to England and remain friends through that, through their lived experience. Um, these two characters kind of represent the British Commonwealth and the immigrants that moved to the UK, uh, moved to Britain, and kind of the struggle or the tension that exists between the two is an amazing character study of these characters. Zadie Smith has really created these rich, well-rounded characters in this story. Each part is told from the perspective of a character and amongst a cast of characters so you don't necessarily hear from the perspective of every character but they all have a role to play in this big story there's this um washing machine so many of you comment on how i have the same washing machine as you i don't know whether it's the same washing machine or whether it's just like a universal song that plays at the end but anyway we'll just let her have her moment Okay, she's done. There's this question of who gets to play God. That is kind of one of the central questions of this book. Um, we have people practicing different religions, the ideas that they hold around God making all the decisions and things, things that happen to you in your life are for a reason and it's what God intended. And then on a smaller scale, you have characters making decisions for other characters in the story that change the trajectory of their lives. Uh, you have people attempting to alter science in this book and um, huge questions around you know morality and trying to determine someone's life trajectory are, are brought, in, brought into play. There's so much more I could say about this book but I just highly recommend that if you at all been interested in Zadie Smith's work definitely check it out listen to the audiobook I listened to it while I was reading it match made in heaven like beautiful perfect everything you need helps you to immerse yourself in the story and yeah it's just a brilliant brilliant book and definitely one of my favorites for the year so far okay next I read Swimming Home by Deborah Levy 
this is a story of a family who are holidaying in Nice. They're staying in a villa, they come home one day and they find a naked woman, Kitty Finch, swimming in their pool. With her introduction into the story comes this sinister, unknowing air to the book. She brings this real sense of quiet chaos to the to the book. I was okay. I, I just thought it was okay. I could kind of see what it was trying to do, but there were just definitely parts where I was like, I'm not following. Like I don't quite know how we got here. You know that when you're like, I, I think I'm there, but I'm not quite. As an overall story, I was kind of like, nah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Okay, next I read Department of Speculation by Jenny Offal. I absolutely loved this book. Phenomenal little novella about a marriage. Told in fragmentary form. And it was just perfect. I loved every moment of it. I read it super quickly. Yeah, I was just kind of blown away with the ability of Jenny Offal to write in this fragmentary form um, about a couple who is experiencing um, this kind of rupture in their marriage and the, the way we're only given bits, certain elements, yet we're still so invested in this couple and wanting to see them succeed and do well and get through this. I thought that was, that completely blew my mind. We were given the exact right details as to their relationship and how they interact and the sweet anecdotes and the moments between them in order for us to feel that way about them, to feel close and to feel like they're our friends who we've known this whole time. Um, that was something that I I don't think I've experienced in a book of such small scale with so few words. It was truly just mind-blowing. So really, really recommend that book if you're looking for complicated relationships, um, but done in a, like a really precise way, I think. Uh, next I read Sent Nudes by Saba Sam. So, oh, this is a collection of short stories um, written about girlhood and kind of the different, the alternative experience to what that could be like or is like that we maybe don't hear a lot of. These stories are quite visceral and raw and vulnerable. A lot of them don't necessarily look at uh, girlhood from a perspective of it being this pristine kind of tied up in a pretty bow type way we see these characters kind of wear their hearts on their sleeves and not always have things turn out well for them but there is this uh, overwhelming sense of hope still in the stories yeah I really enjoyed it uh, I thought that some of the stories um, snake bite. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. The one with the girls who, whose mothers are in the the traveling circus. I thought that was great. Um, uh, Forever Blue. That one was amazing. Yeah, just really, really good. Sh good short stories that celebrate girlhood in its kind of realist, truest form, and not have it be. Um, perfect and pristine and pretty and it was it was good. Next I read Love in the Big City by Sangyang Park. Um, this was long listed for the International Booker. Uh, one of the only books that I was interested in reading along with the Book of Mothers. The Book of Mother. Um, I read this, I say read this and somebody read it with Karen. Um, I only do that because he read it much quicker than I did. No shade to Karen, like, I was, I was slacking on this one because I just didn't love it. I wanted to love it, but I didn't. Um, 
It is, I think, autofiction. So it's the writer's kind of own experience um, of being a queer man growing up living in Korea and Seoul and kind of the struggles that he goes through from his university days through to kind of um, his mid-20s, the struggle, the struggling relationship that he has with his mother, what it is like to be a queer man in a country that um, isn't accepting of, of that. Yeah, it was touching at moments, but I overall just didn't really have anything that connected me to this character. Not because it wasn't a relatable story, but I just don't know whether whether this character was fully realized on the page. It felt at, at certain times like we were missing parts or we only ever experienced the harsher sides to this character. By the time it got to the softer sides, it was hard to kind of reconcile those two together. It just didn't quite do it for me. Next I read The Secret Wives, uh, the Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Desha Filial. I actually listened to this one on audio and I absolutely loved it. I need to get a physical copy because I want to read it. The writing was beautiful, poetic, very kind of syrupy and just, it, it felt like it tasted good in the mouth, if you know what I mean. Um, it's a collection of short stories and each short story it's almost like a confessional um, being given from that from that female character to the reader. So we are being confessed to about different sexual desires, queer desires, familial desires. It's very gossipy. I just loved the way that this book was executed as a whole, and I thought that there wasn't a story that kind of felt less than any other. I think it was really well-rounded. These characters felt complex and interesting and real and they weren't white which is another thing that I loved about them. Lately I've been more of those types of characters, more of those stories from non-white perspectives and it has been hard to find. So this was a total whim picking this one up on audio and listening to it but absolutely loved everything about it. One of my favorite stories was Dear Sister which is this character writing to a sister that they didn't, her and her other sisters didn't know about until the passing of their father. It's this real uh, kind of gossipy catch-up. This is the situation where your sisters, this is what's going on, this is who hates who, like she's a bitch, she's a prude, all that kind of stuff. It reminded me so much of my own family and like stories within my family that have happened like that. I just really loved this collection so, so much. The final book that I read in April was The Story of the Lost Child by Elena Ferrante. If you didn't know, I have been reading um, The Neapolitan Quartet with Sophie from Golden Hour Books on Instagram. Um, I think I've done a couple of vlogs on here. I've obviously talked about them in my wrap up. We've reached the end. It's quite sad that it's over. It's definitely a journey. Um, one that has been interesting to reflect on. I think as a whole series, um, I can safely say that I loved this entire series and that it is one that will be on my favorites list for sure. Never have I read a depiction of what it's like in female friendships than uh, one written by Alan Affronte. So for that reason um, alone, it's, it's a successful series for me. I think looking at the books individually, there are definitely favorites among them. Um, my listing of them would be uh, My Brilliant Friend, uh, The Story of a New Name, second one, yeah, uh, The Story of the Lost Child, and then Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay. So that's kind of like my ranking of the four books. Um, 
This book definitely felt like at times quite repetitive to things that we have already experienced with these characters. A lot of the same kind of disappointments. There are obviously um, some advances in these characters' lives, though Ellen and Leela both becoming more focused on their own careers and juggling motherhood with that as well which was nice to see but there was a point where I was starting to become kind of disappointed that this book didn't really feel like it wanted to move beyond the same storylines that they've relied on in the last few but the last part of the book so old age definitely saved it all for me the characters Leela and Eleanor feel like they've softened a bit more, become more accepting of each other and are just taking a step back to allow the the girls in the story to step forward. So we hear a little bit more from Dede, Elsa and Emma. By the way, I need a whole book on those three, like please, I just want to hear more from them. It was a like a breath of fresh air to get a new, to have these new characters kind of introduced into the story, albeit all of, at the very end. The way it ended is probably some people had some issues with that, but it ended the way it ended. I thought it ended quite well. Something was revealed and it projected you all the way back to the beginning of this series and reminded you that this book is about a friendship between two people that is very intense and very codependent. It rattled me a bit and that's that's why I think I quite liked it because it definitely made you feel like it wasn't over but we'll no longer hear from these characters. I loved the book and what it symbolized as being the end of kind of this story. Yeah just the amazing world that Ferrante was able to take us to. Okay that is my reading from April. Let me know what you read in April. Have you read any of these books? I mean, if you're a Zadie Smith fan and you can recommend what I should read next, let me know. But yeah, I think that was a good wrap up. Like, I felt pretty good about that. Hopefully I can, like, lock whatever that was in for the next one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Ka kite.